So a while back, a friend of mine was really eyeing the new Space Marines in the Indominus box and asked me if I wanted to split it with him. I said, sure, I'll try my hand at some new robot boys and see what I can do with them. Now, once my Indominus box did arrive, I knew inspiration was going to be waning pretty quickly for this project, and I needed to come up with a fast way to get these guys painted, or they're just going to end up in my pile of gray shame that is ever growing in the closet. So I started this project by looking at all the amazing paint schemes that were coming out for Necrons, and all the add-ons that can change the goss colors of the Necrons. I almost went with a purple or blue or even red goss effect, but in the end I just settled for green. There was uh, two reasons for this. One, I'm a sucker for technical paints. I always want to try out the new ones. And second, when starting creative projects, I think sometimes I can find myself in a stage of analysis paralysis, where I'll jump from idea to idea, but never really land on anything, and so nothing happens. I mean, in the end, I might rather have green Necrons than no Necrons. I wasn't even through assembling these guys before I started feeling my interest drift. I found myself looking at conversions and thinking of all the extra bits I should track down. While these ideas are cool, at the end of the day, I needed to be honest with myself and admit they were really just excuses to move on to something else. I knew I was going to have to trick myself into wanting to work on this project, so I quickly abandoned the instructions on how to build each Necron warrior. They made them look a little extra janky, but I'll fix that later. And instead of thinking about the bits I should order, I just focused instead on finishing this project. I thought a challenge would be fun. I remember way back when I used to play 40k far more regularly with my buddy Dan, and he ran Necrons. We used to all give him crap because his army was painted with basically a spray paint can and little else. Or so we thought. If you're watching this, Dan, I honestly can't remember what your Necrons look like. I just know they had more paint on them than my Space Marines or my Orcs. Honestly, a rattle can is kind of the unsung hero of our hobby. It's usually overlooked for the spray brush and kind of quickly abandoned as people get further along. And I feel like there's a lot more we can do with a bottle of spray paint than simply prime our miniatures. And thus, my all spray paint Necron challenge was born. Could I paint my entire Indominus box set only using spray paint? and some masking supplies. So I knew that I wanted to have more than one color on my Necrons. I didn't want them to be flat silver holding green guns. I've always been drawn to rusty Crons, and I knew my Robo Boys were going to have to look like they were barely staying together, especially after my lazy assembly job. So in the past, I've used a method called salt masking on terrain with quite a bit of success. So that means I knew a good technique to fall back onto. If you've never used salt masking, it's a pretty simple idea. You basically spray paint your models one color, then once the paint is fully dried, you spray it down with the cheapest hairspray you can buy, sprinkle salt over the miniature, and then apply the second color. And then you wash the salt off and you should get a solid chipping effect. I did this step twice. Once with a coat of bright orange, then again with a coat of dark brown. I also masked off the gun after lying down the initial black primer. And these warriors look far more better holding black weapons than silver ones. Lastly, if you're not aware, you always want to put metallics over a dark primer like black. It's just going to look a lot better. Right, so uh, this salt technique gave me a pretty solid start to my Necron army. Now, I really wanted the weapons on the Necrons to pop. For my warriors, I added the bright green last by masking off everything I didn't want green. I then hit the model to the white and then the neon green. This was honestly the downside of my challenge, where I spent a lot of time masking these guys, and honestly, this is where I probably would have stopped using a spray paint if it wasn't for that challenge. Because the amount of time I've spent masking, I could have probably just brushed the details on faster. But this did give me an opportunity to try out a brand new product, and that's the Liquid Mask by Vallejo. This stuff is uh, pretty solid, to be honest. And let me mask off parts of the Necrons that tape simply wouldn't get into. On this project, though, I did learn you need to wait for that mask to dry completely. And it's far better to put it on thick, even if that means adding a second coat after the first one dries. As the thicker the latex is, the easier it is to remove it off detail. This stuff also works much better on flat surfaces than down in detailed cracks. Last note on Vallejo Liquid Mask, is I think this product would actually work better with an airbrush than spray paint, as a rattle can tends to lay down thicker coats. 
but either way, I was going to play more with this medium in the future. After finishing my warriors, I moved on to the more stylized miniatures of the collection. I usually start with a troop when painting a new army, get a basic idea for the paint scheme, and then moved on to the HQ and elites, as these models tend to stand out more on the board. For my HQ and elites, I revised my paint plan and sprayed the green down first, then masked the liquid latex instead of salt. The salt was just too abrasive, and simply just pulled up the green spray paint in an earlier test. I got this idea of my revised paint plan after watching a video by Eric's Hobbies Workshop. So uh, thanks Eric. I just used a bit of torn sponge and violently dabbed the masking median. And this was a lot faster and far less messy. If I do build any more Necrons in the future and try to flush out this army, I'm certainly going to use a neon green as the base. So once all the paint had dried, I just removed it with a toothbrush. And this was probably the most rewarding thing I've done in painting in a long time. I just can't tell you how much fun it was to see all the layers of paint come up and the finished model start peeking out from underneath. I felt like some kind of archaeologist digging up a forgotten tech. Or something. And that probably sounds like a pretty good start to my Necron's backstory. Hey, a uh, destroyed Imperial mining facility might be a pretty cool board. And plus, I really do like seeing the idea of these guys stomping across a tomb world not some old imperial city. So at this point, I think I got a pretty passable tabletop quality army here. And it was all just using spray paint. Overall, this army was super easy to paint. In fact, most of the time here was spent just waiting for paint to dry and for weather to clear. I'd say this challenge was moderately successful. At this point, I had an army that looked okay. It wasn't going to win any awards, but it had three colors, and it was painted further along than many of my other armies I've seen at my local hobby shop, and even armies I've owned in the past. Sorry, Snodgrot and the boys. Maybe I'll revisit you someday. Now, this is where motivation really kicked in. Seeing an army this far along made me really want to take it to the next level. So I retired the rattle cans and picked up the brushes. I did some edge highlighting with white and this metallic paint. And the motivation I got from this was great, because lately I've been dealing with a lot of resistance in my creative endeavors. If you're not familiar with the idea of resistance, it's an idea put forward in Stephen Pressfield's book, The War of Art. Basically, resistance is anything that's standing between you and following your creative passions. Sure, it's easy to point to things that can be wasteful, like my 30th orc campaign in Total War Warhammer. Things like going to work, taking care of your family, and just generally being an adult can really eat up most of our day, and probably should. And I for one am not saying divorce your wife, abandon your kids, and quit your job so you have more time to paint miniatures. But I for one know my main resistance has come with my struggle to develop a routine, and I fell victim to waiting for inspiration. For me, painting is a fun hobby, but for me the real motivation has been using these models on the game table. And unfortunately, I haven't been getting any games in since COVID has started. And it's really putting a damper on my modeling creativity and motivation. In fact, watching creators like Devin Dice and Lila the Mini Witch are what's really keeping me going. I mean, seeing other creators constantly pump out amazing work has been a blast to watch and has guilted me into waking up and painting. But we shouldn't rely on others to motivate us to do something. I, for one, enjoy this, so this is something I need to make time for. I tell myself I want to do creative work, but at times, it's just that, work. And it's easy to let projects stall out once you hit a point of lost motivation. Sometimes we just need to grind through a project out, because we know the satisfaction of seeing these guys all done is going to be worth the effort. And that's what makes this hobby so rewarding. And luckily by knowing my own weaknesses and my tendency to lean on procrastination, I was able to challenge myself slash trick myself into doing something that was going to get this army 80% done using a goofy gimmicky paint method and helped me not abandon this project and get far enough along that I wanted to see it through. So with a lot of spray paint, a little brush work, and some pretty cool basing techniques, I was able to take this project that I was a little lackluster to start and turn it into something I'm super excited to show off at the table.
Oh, and in case you're wondering, Tesseract Glow is amazing. But it'll probably have better use in the services of a great horn rat. Yes, yes, paint more warp stone, we must. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.